Tabor Tilth, Connie Van Dyke's urban oasis in Portland, Oregon, is a living example of how we can grow food in our cities, in our suburbs, close to where we need it. Tabor Tilth Farm is um, about a fifth of an acre in inner city Portland. Probably about 60 to 70 percent of the food that I eat and barter and the fibers um, and wild crafting all happens right in this area here. Valuing diversity is a core principle of permaculture and Connie's garden feeds beneficial insects and soil microorganisms as well as herself. Really intense plantings all around it. So the fig is right here. This is um, purslane. Oh, corn salad or mashua. Um, Black-eyed Susan for insect beneficial. This is um, potatoes, fever few. Right in this area here, we've got three pawpaw trees, which is native to the United States. It's one of our only native fruits. It's our local potassium, so it, it's, it's our banana. Three plum trees here. Two chestnuts over in the corner here. And uh, sea berry is a nitrogen fixer from, um, I th think it's uh, from Russia? I'm not sure. This is a Persian mulberry. With apples, you want to pick, you know, uh, extended varieties. So I have an, a very early ripening um, Williams Pride and then a, a storage. So basically I have apples from July to probably February. So I have an internship that comes through here and stays and lives in my basement and helps learn this urban setting because this is really an important part. We can't, you know, all live in the country and it's in, we have to get denser. This is um, fat passion flower which is a good um, herb for um, helping people sleep and relax and it has a beautiful flower on it as well so that's a good multiple function. And this one has jasmine for evening scent that's going up the kiwi. So basically you've got four or five vertical plants going up here. So this tub here is a nice cycle here because the tub has um, a fish in it called Lucky and he eats all the mosquitoes and he poops in there and the water comes down and it feeds um, the bamboo. Now the bamboo needs water. It also needs nitrogen. So we place the bamboo in between its two needs, which is really an important cycle. So it, it gets nitrogen from the manures and water from the pond. Now what are its yields? The yields of the bamboo are the shade um, for the rabbits. They need a lot of shade in the summer. And the rabbits eat this bamboo in the winter. And we also use it for uh, mason bee hives. We have a lot of mason bees here. So um, they're, they're, this, this whole system takes care of itself. I don't do anything here. It just works itself out. Okay, this is my, my buck. His name is Pro. He's a sweetheart. He's really friendly. Sometimes he'll come out. And um, this is Tina, his wife, Protein and uh, another buck in waiting there. Um, this is part, a big part of the farm because this produces my manure. They're um, an intricate part of the cycle. They eat all the weeds that I don't want and um, they do a really good job of eating the rotten pears. So they make meat out of all of these. And um, no, I don't eat my pets. I only eat their babies. We are trying to have a big movement to get the native bees back here. And they don't make honey, but they work twice as hard at pollinating. These mason bees um, will come out in April. And if you provide a, a tube or, or a drilled hole in a block for them, they come out in the spring and the males come out first. They find a new hole location and the female comes out about two or three weeks later and her wings are wet and they mate with each other and then they move on to a new hole and they fill it up again. 
So it's really, really easy to get these passed around. What we do is make these tubes and then hand them out to other people, and they in turn hand them to other people and other people, and that's how we fill up the area with um, pollinators again. And Jay's right here, and sometimes he'll take it right out of my hand. <laughs> Another permaculture principle is that waste is a resource. I dumped it here of five yards of chips, and what um, I also ended up getting was firewood from the city, the park in the city. There's no reason why we shouldn't utilize everything we can in the city. And then some nice squirrel has planted an English walnut. Also, the neighbor's duplex on the other side contributes to my compost pile and then takes uh, food from the garden. So they don't have to grow the food, but we get their nutrients. By closing that loop, we can provide a lot here. This is a, in providing an incredible amount of habitat for all kinds of critters. It's been here for seven years. I don't know who lives in there, but <laughs> I'm assuming there's lots of... Um, I, I've seen a snake or two in there, a garter snake, and um, we have lots of neighbor cats, so it's important. We have um, bumbler bees that are solitaire bees that need space like this, stick piles. I believe there's probably a lot of mice that live in there that aerate my compost pile. I don't turn it, so it's an important part to have a lot of air tunnels through my compost pile. Okay. So, there was... Uh, that's great, because then you've got the compost all kind of nicely shredded, and that would be fantastic for worm compost, too. Yeah, it just we just throw all the food right down that hole, and it goes straight into the bucket, and um, then we haul it out to the composting pile. So then we open this system up here, and um, we put all the kitchen scraps, all the vacuum bag, uh, everything goes in this compost pile. And you can see it smells great. It's not a problem. It, um, it works well and it's probably, I can feel the heat now, it's probably about 150 degrees in there. That's what we grow all our food with. So this one, this system's been up here for a while and it's simply just a bucket inside of a bucket. And, um, then we have the chips are made right here on the urban farm. And then we have um, urine collection. There's the male and the female urine collection. Or we also urinate in, in the bucket as well, too. And then the magazine rack is the old toilet that we have. And we do uh, a hue manure here. So the way um, the hue manure works on this farm is we, I'm, I want to be really safe with it, so I allow um, the compost to get really hot, which kills all pathogens, but I also let it set for an entire year. So that has been closed off since um, April, and won't, I won't use it until next April. I think, you know, doing um, hue manure is also a, an important political act, too because we're saying to the system we don't want to keep polluting the oceans. It's really an important part of the whole process to keep everything on this lot, including the rain, including our poop. <laughs> everything has to stay here. My daily practice, my meditation is just working with nature and feeding myself. Mm -hmm.